it's your girl Kana Shakana Noel and I'm back with another video for y'all so who's ready hmm are you ready hmm let's start with today's announcements so if you haven't already make sure to please please subscribe to my channel and make sure to like and comment on this video if you liked what I talked about or if you had some similar experiences let me know below also let's get into today's fit of course y'all already know it is thrifted so I got this Nike like vintage Nike top from Avalon exchange and then I thrifted these pants can y'all see the details I thrifted these from um, Thrift King, which is in Penn Hills. If you live in Pittsburgh, you know where that's at. I hope that you guys are enjoying all the vlogs that I'm putting out and the videos and informational stuff. If you love it, uh, thank you so much. I'm glad that you do. And if you have any recommendations or something that you want me to talk about, let me know. Send me a direct message or whatever. I have two Instagrams. You can look me up and DM me if you want at Shekinah Noel, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H-N-O-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. If you like stuff pertaining to the travel videos, which today this video is about, you can look up glorious.travels. Yeah, get into it. Now that we're done with all of that, let's get into today's video, which is about driving in El Salvador. Oof. I had many, many, many experiences. Some good, some not so great, but overall still life-changing and definitely a lesson learned. So we're gonna talk about that today because I feel like a lot of people are starting to travel to El Salvador now, which is great. It's an amazing, beautiful, compact country. I love it. I'm obsessed with that place. I cannot wait to go back. and. This would just be helpful for you when you're driving there. Let me give you a little bit of history on my driving experience. I got my license when I was 18. I pretty much just drove around my area of town. I was always scared to take longer drives, but if I needed to, I would. I went to California in 2020 and I drove a few times in the rental car that we had, which was an SUV. So it was kind of nerve wracking driving. My driving experience isn't great, but it's also not horrible. When I decided to go to El Salvador, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to travel around this whole country, which means I don't want to rely on buses. I want to move at my own pace. So I'm going to have to drive. Pro tip before you travel somewhere, look up what their driving is like in the country. See if you should or if you shouldn't. Like some places will tell you like hands down, no, do not drive here. Some places will be like, oh no, you'll be cool. They have really good highway systems and all that other stuff. When I finally got to El Salvador after the whole escapade that I went through to get there, I rented with budget. If you're under 25, know that those fees apply to you in all other countries that you go to. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I feel like I should have written that down. I think my total when I did all of it, it was like said and done. It was like 450 or something like that. And then they do a $500 deposit like a hold on your on your credit card as well so make sure you have a credit card and then also make sure you have the funds for that $500 hold and then on top of like basically $500 to book a car there so I stayed in El Salvador for I think it was like 10 days I you guys I don't even feel like doing the math right now I should have did it before I started this video but I did it I had insurance on the car I had the under 25 feet and then you know the car rental for those nine or ten days side note when i did get my car they had me waiting for like an extra hour and you know what also they they bumped up my car when i got there i originally which would have been crazy god was really looking out for me i originally only booked the compact car but because they had me waiting for an hour or more to get my car rental they were like we're just going to give you a sedan no, if you're gonna get a sedan, it's gonna be more than 450 for your car rental. Good thing I remembered that. My review on the road conditions 
Overall, the roads weren't too bad in El Salvador. They had a lot of reconstructed highways. While I was there, they were reconstructing a lot of the roads and they had a lot of speed limit signs, cop stops, all types of things. It kind of made me feel comfortable. Not the whole cop thing because I would hate to get pulled over somewhere, but like knowing that the other people that were driving there that lived there are not going too crazy on the road. It's like, okay, cool. Like they're making sure they're doing what they got to do. I'm making sure I'm keeping up with being like respectful to the rules of the road and all that other stuff. El Salvador's roads were pretty developed in my opinion. I even said that when I did the research. So you're definitely going to have a smooth ride most of the time while you're there. But if you plan on going to some of the other places that are in the cuts, you're gonna want that four wheel drive. While I was in El Salvador, I traveled to, I would say around like seven to eight different regions or towns or cities of the country. I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of those different cities, towns, or whatever while I was there and let you know what I felt like the driving was like and the roads were like. Coming from the airport and heading to San Salvador, the roads were great, to be honest. They were, it was honestly straight highway the entire time. There were very few roads that I took that weren't paved. So the other area that I was in while I was in El Salvador was Santa Ana and around there, I drove to stay at the igloos. They have like these cool igloo places that you can stay right in front of some of the volcanoes that they have in El Salvador. The drive up there wasn't bad at all. I had to drive two hours and like 15 minutes to get to these igloos and I had to do it pretty quick because the sun was going to be setting soon. Even driving up through the mountains, it was pretty amazing. Like the roads, the mountain was paved and there was a lot of room and it was very comfortable driving that I had on my way up to the igloo stay. It was just like, there was so much room on the road. Like you had your lane, another lane, area over here if you had to stop, an area over here if you had to stop. So they did an amazing job of paving that. So I'm gonna say if you're gonna be driving up around Santa Ana Volcano in that area of town, you should be set with the two wheel drive. From Santa Ana, I drove to Lake Cotepeque and around that area, the driving was pretty great as well. I didn't run into any issues at all. There were literally no complications when it came to the driving. Very comfortable all the way there. I don't think I had any problems because the drive was only like an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. From Lake Cotepeque, I headed over to the town of, I'm gonna look before I say the name of this town because I just don't wanna pronounce it incorrectly. The town that I went to was called Wayua, Yua, like, Chua. Chua. <laughs> Let me see if I can look it up on Google. Hold on. Huayua. 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 Okay, Wayua, that's what I'm gonna say. The town that I drove to from Lake Cotepeque was Wayua, and that is where we went to like the, the seven waterfalls. I can't roll my R's, y'all. This is this is starting to sound so ghetto. I feel like so disrespectful. <sighs> we went to Los Churros de Calera, and that place was so amazing. It was out the way from my initial plan, but heading there, the roads weren't bad as well. It was very mountainous. So we drove from Lake Cotepeque to the town of Wayua, and then we went to the waterfalls and the drive wasn't bad at all. It was very misty because we were getting pretty high up. Yeah, I would say the roads there were pretty paved as well on the way there. And then once we got to the waterfall, like the entrance of the waterfall and, and where you could ask somebody for a guide to the waterfall, Fall, my car was like girl you better be careful so we had to park at somebody's house and they like watched our cars if I can like enter the clip I will now this is where you know the not so great not so good comes into play when it came to driving but this is still like girl what did you expect type of thing when I left the town of Wayua I had to head to Tamanique which is a small town near Playa El Tunco and on the way there I experienced 
some hardships. <laughs> when I was in NYU, I had to stop at one of the Chinese restaurants and I had to ask them to use their Wi-Fi and I called the woman who owned the Airbnb that I was heading to. And she said specifically on the phone, okay, that's about a two hour drive. She was like, you're gonna need to head to San Salvador and then drive from San Salvador to Tamanique. And I was like, okay, great. But I don't think I fully paid attention or I didn't understand exactly why she told me that. I didn't at all. I just was like, oh, okay, bet. Like, great, I'm about, I was like, I wasn't rushing, but I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thanks for the tip. All right, I gotta go because I'm trying to head there and the sun's about to set and I'm about to be caught outside in the dark, you know? So I get in the car and I'm heading there. And as I'm about an hour and a half in, to this drive. I'm in this small part of town. I don't know exactly where it was at. It, like, it was like Wayanita or Ayanita, something like that. Something that started with a J. And I was just like, oh, this is so cool. They had all these colors and they had this and I had Wi-Fi reception. I was able to post a story on Instagram real quick. I had to pull over and post a little story real quick, which is, <laughs> that shows you where my priorities are. But I was able to also make a quick call because I didn't have any reception. And I realized once I got all the way to the top of this hill, my car directions, my GPS, Google Maps, was telling me to drive straight. And I wish I would have taken a photo to show y'all what I was looking at to where I was like, hell no. It basically had a sign, it didn't, but in my head, what I saw was a sign that said, if you have two wheel drive, you're not gonna make it. I was like, well. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this ain't happening. So I literally immediately started panicking and I was like, you know what? You don't have time to panic. You have to reroute. At some point during that trip, I stopped heading to San Salvador and was heading like a back road to Tamanique. And I didn't really know how to get out of that. I was already like two hours and 15 minutes in. And I was like, I have to turn around and drive back through that town, which was really bumpy. And then I had to drive through these, these back roads, seeing all these cows and people walking their cows and this and literally not knowing where I'm going. And then I had to drive back down this super windy mountain, the one that had the reception for a little bit that rerouted again. And it was like an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to take this way to get here. Like this is, I was just like, Like this is literally what I gotta do at this point. So I started driving there and it was so funny because in my YouTube videos, my El Salvador series, you can literally see my face going from like, yeah, I'm on the way driving there to, okay, I don't really know where I'm at, but I'm still on the way there to, I'm lost. <laughs> Once it rerouted me, that is literally when all hell broke loose. I was in the car for like over two hours and I was driving and I literally was like, I'm gonna have to call somebody. I had like a short little period of when I had reception, I was able to make a call. I called my mom, I was bawling in the car and she's like, girl, I don't know what to tell you, but you gotta keep driving. Cause I was ready to end it. I was ready to end it. And I'd be like, forget it. I'll become a mountain person. Like, I don't care. I'm not going anywhere. It was horrible because it was like dirt road, undeveloped mountain road. And then they had like, two blocks of concrete. So this was enough room for you to fit your tires on each side to get your way up this mountain. And I was like, yo, your girl is really gonna die out here. It was like mountainside and you barely had room for two cars and there was cars driving down here. And I'm like, I'm not scooching over anymore because over here it's like death drop. <laughs> so I had to drive through that, which was really scary. I don't even know fully what part of town that was, but if you're going to go to Los Churros de Caleta and then head over to Tamanique, please make sure that you take the way from there to get to San Salvador and from San Salvador go to Tamanique because it is not that far. It's like only, it may add like an extra 45 minutes to your trip, but you rather take that 
of straight highway than going the way that I went through the mountains. I was in the mountains for so long, literally terrified. I never thought I would see the end of it. I honestly believed I was gonna be stuck there forever. But once I got out of the mountains and entered the town of Tamanique, it was a pretty small town, but it was also really developed at that as well. There was pretty much one road. I had to meet somebody who would be able to take me to my Airbnb because my Airbnb literally is not possible to access without a car that has four wheel drive. I parked my car in Tamanique and I can probably insert a clip of like how shaky it was. I'm just sitting in the car like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And after leaving there and heading from the cabin in Tamanique up in the mountains, then I got in my car and drove from Tamanique to El Tunco. And let me tell y'all, that drive was easy, breezy, beautiful. I felt like a cover girl. It was so nice. It was pleasant and it was beautiful. The roads from Tamanique to El Tunco were, it was literally just one highway and then boom, you pop out, you make a little left and now you're in El Tunco. El Tunco um, and then the area of La Libertad, which is the area that is like the beaches, Playa Zante, El Tunco, and which is just like the beach side. It was all highway as well. Tremendous driving, no issues whatsoever. From La Libertad, El Tunco area to San Salvador, the city was also very easy. It was again a highway. I'm pretty sure that highway's new. Like that highway had to have been new. It was such a nice, beautiful drive. You can see the water over here and the mountains and you're just driving through. I'm pretty sure it was an hour as well and it was a pretty dope ride and simple. It was so simple to get there. Now when I got into actual San Salvador like downtown near the mall and everything, oh no I took an Uber. I was not driving. Those people down there were driving crazy. The driving to me was just like something that I wouldn't have been able to handle because you know they got the markets and they got the town square and there's all this stuff going on. There's a whole bunch of people, there's traffic. It was too much and I was like, thank God I did not drive down in this part of town because I would not have been able to handle it. I would have been like, Ooh, goodness gracious. But I drove through Santa Tecla and up to um, picnic Steakhouse, the restaurant, to do the Imagine Slide, and that drive was pretty easy as well. From San Salvador, I drove to Sushi Toto, which is like this cool, popular, like colorful, beautiful town, an hour and 30 minutes away from San Salvador, and that drive was just as easy. All together, driving in El Salvador, I would honestly, out of like 10 being like a good time, I would say it was like a solid seven like seven to eight for real. Other than the situation that I had that could have been prevented about me driving in the mountains and stuff like that, it really wasn't bad. It was pretty comfortable and I felt like, man, like I can really drive in other countries if I needed to. Like the ending of this video is really just me encouraging you to go to El Salvador and drive while you're there and check out all the places that you can in the country. I, the drives aren't that long, like four hours max, if anything, from place to place. So check it out and just love it like it's so cool it's such an easy place to drive and navigate and i would honestly say that the service isn't too bad just make sure that you have like some routes pre-saved and downloaded to your google maps best wishes to you guys if you're watching this before you start heading to el salvador i'm glad that you were able to check this video out before you head there and once you get back let me know what you think about the driving make sure you subscribe to my channel and i hope that you have a wonderful day. Again, my name is Shekinah Noel and I'll see y'all in the next vlog or video. Bye. <laughs>